This is Max. In case you're tuning in for the first time, let me catch you up. You see, the other day my kooky Aunt Murgatroyd sent my friend Molly and I a mysterious package. She said it was a time machine. We didn't believe her at first. Boy, were we wrong. Then she recruited us to be part of a secret order of problem solvers who travel through time and space solving riddles and puzzles created by the troublesome trolls. They're like the bad guys. Anyway, now every day is one big adventure as Molly and I use math and logic to try and solve mysteries about true histories. This is beyond gross. You're telling me other people always smell you more than you smell yourself. Wait, don't use my Spider-Man towel. Use the pink one. Isn't that your mom's? Who cares? Just keep wiping. Well, at least we learned a few things. Like July 18th, 1606 at the Globe Theater isn't our mystery destination. We also learned people back then threw oysters at the actors when they're not happy with their performance. Who does that? I would have thought the crowd at a Shakespeare play would be a little more sophisticated. Then again, it could have been worse. Worse? I got caught in a mollusk crossfire. What could be worse? It could have been a production of Green Eggs and Hamlet. Oh, wow. Anyway, there's got to be a better way to figure out where in time we need to go to stop the trolls. You're right. Even if time isn't an issue, trial and error is exhausting. (laughs) And stinky. Ah! Keep wiping! Look, we know it's a day in July. We know the rest of the dates use the numbers 1, 1, 6, 6, 8, and 0. We've eliminated a bunch already, but there's still tons of combinations to check. How is it so hard? Like, if the trolls can figure it out, why can't we? We're smart-ish. Thanks. Ish. But maybe you're onto something. I am? We're thinking like us. Maybe we need to think like trolls. Ooh, good idea. Thanks. I meant me. I was the one who was on to something, remember? Whatever. Trolls don't like to hide things in a way that nobody can figure out. They like to hide things in plain view. Hanging right in front of your face, but just out of sight. Right. Just hanging there, like a calendar on the wall. Wait. Conklin's calendar. It had all those markings on it. We should go back and look at it again. Oof. That's risky. Conklin's definitely on to us. That's okay. We can just use the time machine to go back to last week, right after we saw him leaving his office. Awesome. Let's fire it up. Whoa. What's happening? What's that noise? I don't know. Why aren't we materializing? Beats me. It's like we're stuck outside of time. This has never happened before. I'd call Aunt Murgatroyd, except I forgot my phone. The time machine is frozen. It won't let us send a signal and travel anywhere else. Max, I'm scared. Me too. What if we... Hey, look. Conklin's calendar is glowing. You see that? There's like a purple field around it. And we seem to be stuck in it. It's no ordinary calendar. What do we do? What if we're trapped here forever? Don't freak out. You're freaking out. I know. Ah! 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 You okay? Yeah, I'm done. You? Yeah, now what? Got anything to snack on? I wish. I guess while we're suspended here, we might as well try figuring out what clues the calendar has. Other than being a time traveler trap. It's Conklin! Hi! How? Where? I can't move. Hey, yes, I can hear you. Yes, I'm alone. What? Oh, wow. I don't think he can see or hear us. We must be out of phase with the rest of the world. Hopefully, he can't smell me either. Oysters! Really? Quiet, just in case. No, he definitely can't see us. But we can see him picking his nose. Yikes, he's really digging in there. We've been over this 100 times. Check your calendar. Flip to July. Everything you need is on there. Yes, the last one is G. Got it? Good. You shouldn't be calling me this close to go time. What fools. They're almost as bad as that Max kid. 
Hey! <sighs> At least it's lunchtime. Wow, I am really not liking that guy. Yeah, yeah, save that for later. Look! The calendar is flipped to July. But what's all that written on it? I don't know. Also, why is the word July printed upside down at the top of glowing numbers and letters before it? How would I know? None of this makes any sense. What if our time machine is activating the calendar? What if the calendar is a time machine too? Say what? Well, we know the trolls can time travel too. If our time machine is an old radio, why couldn't theirs be a cute cat calendar? Good point. Can you see what's written on the calendar? The letters spell out noon, and there are some numbers. Eight, one, nine, zero, nine, one, and then it's upside down July. Ugh, more numbers. Those don't match our clues. They're close. There are two ones, an eight, and a zero, but no sixes, and the nines are new. And why is noon written right side up and July upside down? Unless it isn't. I'm looking right at it, Max. Noon is right side up. Remember what Mark Twain told us. You can't trust your eyes when your imagination is out of focus. What if the entire top of the calendar is upside down? So instead of reading it as noon, 819091 upside down July, it actually reads July 16th, 618 noon. Max, those are all our clue numbers. You figured it out. You are smart-ish. Thanks. That just leaves one question. What? No. No what? Where? Yikes. Conklin's back. It's okay. He still can't see us. Wow. From this angle, you can really see his comb over. It's like one super long hair piled up like a sweater. It's like a bowl of spaghetti made from one long noodle. <laughs> You're terrible. Hey, you said it first. Oh no, he's grading my last math quiz. Yikes, that's a lot of red ink. Shh, he can't hear us. Still, just in case, focus on where we need to go. Could that be on the calendar too? Fine, but after we're done with this, I'm gonna go back in time to retake this quiz now that I see the answers. I don't think your aunt gave us a time machine so you can cheat on your quizzes. Whatever. Okay, let's solve this thing. Can you see what else is written on the calendar? I see holidays written in. There's Thanksgiving, Valentine's Day, Hanukkah. There's holidays written going all the way up to the 11th of the month, which is National Dog Day. Aw, I gotta get something for Rufus. But wait, that's all wrong. None of those holidays are in July. True. But again... Maybe the answer is hiding in plain sight. How? What if we take the first letter from each holiday, together they spell... Tivifmond. Okay, forget that. What if each letter equals a number, and that number gets multiplied by the number of letters, and then matched to other letters, which spells out... We're hosed. No way, Max. I say the code would be easy to solve for anyone who knows it. Hey, what did Conklin say before we're on the phone? The last letter is G. Maybe he's spelling out the word picking because he sure loves picking his nose. Look at him go. He's practically got his entire wrist in his nostril. These guys should call themselves the Booger Bandits or Snot Sneakers instead of Troublesome Trolls. Are you done? Yes. And yes, he said the last letter is G. But what does that mean? Well, the last holiday on the calendar is National Dog Day. That has a G, and it's written on the 11th day, but if you count 7, 8, 9, 10, 11... Aha! G is the 11th letter of National Dog Day. Maybe the day of the month indicates which letter in the holiday is the code. Ooh, let's try it. Thanksgiving is on the 1st, and the first letter is a T. Valentine's Day is on the 2nd, which makes the second letter A. Hanukkah on the 3rd gives us an N. Flag day on the 4th is G. T-A-N-G. Tang. And if we keep going, it spells out Tang of Shang. Sounds like a hip-hop group. Actually, the King Tang of Shang was one of the first emperors of China. Whoa, Max, you are a history machine. You know it. 
Anyway, I believe the Tang of Shang lived around 618 CE, which means, I think we figured it out, July 16th, 0618 CE. Yes! I mean, yes! Yikes, did Conklin just turn around? Yeah, but not because of us. More like he's checking over his shoulder to see if the coast is clear. Now what's he doing? Rummaging in his desk. Look, he just took something out. Is that a trophy? Yeah, but not a real one. Like one of those little participation trophies. Whoa, it's blinking. I think he's about to participate in some time. Travel. Wow, where are we? The 2002 Super Mathio Bros Tournament. How the heck do you know that? There's a giant banner on the wall. Oh, duh. Hey, did you notice? We've been released from the time trap. We're real again. <sighs> oh, thank goodness. Conklin's trophy bounced us back here. But why? Uh, maybe that's why. Look. What am I looking at? All I see are a bunch of kids competing in some sort of math video game contest. Does that kid in the middle look familiar? Trolly moly! It's a young Mr. Conklin. Wow, he's been going bald since childhood. That's rough. I don't see older Mr. Conklin around. Maybe his device just lets him rewatch memories. In that case, we better stay out of sight while we figure out how to get back to our time. Hello! If you're just joining us, my name is Chet Nickerson. Alongside me is former Matthew winner, Addison Angle. We're about to begin the final event of today's Super Matthew Brothers Tournament. As you know, players are competing for $10,000 and a job as a junior video game developer. That's right, Chet. And for this final event, they've added a delicious twist. Not only will our competitors have to solve a challenging math problem on this beautiful Sunday afternoon, they'll also have to devour a tasty ice cream Sunday, provided by our sponsor, Jen and Barry's Ice Cream. Ooh, some ice cream would be great on this hot summer day. And they're off. Aloysius Conklin jumps out to an early lead. Aloysius? Wow. He just can't catch a break. Conklin has yet to lose a math battle today, and he's made it very clear. Winning this contest means the world to him. Developing video games is literally his dream job. Hey, mine too. All Conklin needs to do to win is polish off his ice cream sundae and then solve the final math problem. But he seems to be hesitating. Yeah, I'm surprised he's not just digging in. After all, who doesn't like ice cream? Oh, and let me add, Jen and Berries has provided dairy-free ice cream for our lactose intolerant competitors. Oh wait, Conklin, he's taking his first bite. Ah! Yikes, brain freeze, down goes Conklin, down goes Conklin. If he doesn't recover, he's gonna blow his lead. Poor kid. Oh, wait, he's back up and eating again, but he's struggling. I gotta tell you, Addison, I've never seen a kid dislike ice cream so much. It's ice cream. Who doesn't like ice cream? And Conklin continues to shovel it in, but he's clearly feeling the pain. This is so weird. Okay, he's done. It's time to solve the final math problem. Oh, but it's a doozy. Addison, care to break it down for the audience listening at home? The final problem is 6 divided by 2 times parenthesis 1 plus 2. Like you said, it's tricky. How is that tricky? You just need to use that order of operations thing. What's that called again? PEMDAS. That's right. P-E-M-D-A-S. It stands for parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. You do the parentheses first, 1 plus 2, which gives you 3. Then you multiply. Two times three, which is six. Six divided by six is one. The answer is one, simple. Except that's wrong. Wrong? How? 
Because, according to PEMDAS, multiplication and division are considered totally equal. Neither one goes first. So after solving the parentheses first, which in this case is 2 plus 1 equals 3, the correct order is to go from left to right. 6 divided by 2 is 3. Multiply that by the 3 inside the parentheses. 3 times 3 equals 9. Voila! The correct answer is 9. Whoa! You should enter the Matthew Tournament Mall. Oh, it looks like Aloysius Conklin has written a nine on his board. All he needs to do now is buzz in with the correct answer, and he'll win the Matthew Brothers Tournament. But wait, there's a problem. <laughs> ah, before Conklin was able to buzz in, he began uh, returning his ice cream. Oh no, you just hate to see this. <laughs> oh wow. Conklin is puking everywhere. I think I'm going to be sick. And while Conklin is busy tossing his cookies and cream, another competitor, Myrtle Murgatroyd, has buzzed in with the correct answer. Myrtle Murgatroyd? As in your Aunt Murgatroyd? Can this day get any weirder? And we have a winner. Addison is down on the field with Myrtle Murgatroyd after her big victory. Myrtle, how does it feel having won the... This isn't fair! This is my dream! And if it wasn't for that gross ice cream, I would have won! You don't deserve to win, Murgatroyd! And I promise, even if I have to bend space and time, I will rid the world of ice cream forever! Wow! It seems lactose isn't the only thing Conklin is intolerant of! That... explains a lot. It sure does. Should we go say hi to my aunt? No, that might mess up a timeline thing. We've got all the pieces to the puzzle. You know where we're heading next, right? Oh, yeah. July 6th, 0618 CE. To meet the King of Tang in Shang, China. We are the Problem Solvers! This episode of Mysteries About True Histories was written by Adam Markowitz and voiced by Dexter Danger Mayo, Molly Smith, Mike Praviti, Laura Rondinella, and Adam Tex Davis. Original music by Brian Suarez. Our associate producer is Max Kamaski. Technical direction and sound design by Josh Hahn. The executive producers are Adam Tex Davis and Jerry Kolber from Atomic Entertainment. And Jed Baker and Agaranish A. Palmer from Starglow Media. Mysteries About True Histories is a Starglow Media and Atomic Entertainment production. Grown-ups, looking for ad-free audio fun for the whole family? Subscribe to Starglow Plus on Apple or wherever you get your podcasts. Learn more at starglowmedia.com slash subscribe. Catch you on the next Mysteries About True Histories. Oh, hey, we've been here before. Only now it's called Constantinople, not Istanbul. We're in the seat of the Holy Roman Empire under the rule of Marcus Aurelius Caesar. <laughs>